Erdogan, Vice President of Vilkent University, to deliver the message of His Excellency Recep Tayyip Erdogan, Prime Minister of Turkey. Distinguished academics, distinguished guests, I take great pleasure in addressing you on the occasion of the 15th Science Conference of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences. We all know that science is the key to development and that scientific progress is endlessly shaping our lives. Today, more and more areas are opening in science and science is becoming ever more specialized. New technological discoveries and inventions are affecting our lives at a faster pace than ever. Humanity's progress in science is awe-inspiring, but it is a fact that the world's peoples experience this progress to very different degrees. Every country profits from this progress in, propor in proportion to its economic and social development its power to compete on a global scale, and its capacity to acquire, absorb, and apply technological advances. In today's world, we have the following situation. On the one hand, we have countries which are producing science and technology. On the other hand, we have those which use this new knowledge to the extent that they can acquire and apply it and also those that are able to add new science and technology to others' findings. Distinguished guests, we see that the member countries of the Organization of the Islamic Conference have quite different economic and social structures. In this respect, the difference between them can be great even in two adjacent countries. In reality, almost all of the problems of development are the same. For this reason, the methods of struggle need to be the same. In my opinion, the situation of science and technology is the following. It is with sorrow that I must admit that all Islamic countries, albeit to differing degrees, are dependent on others for science and technology. They are all trying to industrialize. Of course, there are some which in some sectors have gained experience and lessened their dependence on external sources for technology. But it is thought provoking to realize that none of the Islamic countries is yet among the science and technology producing nations. This despite the fact that the Islamic countries' scientific tradition from history and from Islam is full of successes. Distinguished guests, it is certainly unfortunate that the members of a religion for which the first commandment is read should be in a state so contradictory to their own history. You are all aware that during some of the brightest periods in humanity's history, Islamic science was at the lead. For this reason, the heritage of Islamic civilization has played an important role in bringing science to where it is today. During the first centuries of Islam, approximately through the end of the sixth Hijri century, Islamic science enjoyed a golden age. During those years, the learned people living in Islamic states in the Middle East and belonging to different religions and ethnic groups made important contributions to science. They translated works from other civilizations and enriched them with new and original additions. They made discoveries in scientific and technological fields such as astronomy, mathematics, medicine, and engineering. The Islamic world experienced its second period of leadership from the 8th to the 15th centuries in Andalusia. Within the, multi the multicultural richness of Andalusia, the works of Islamic learned men were translated into Western languages and circulated in Europe. This enormous work of translation, as admitted by all historians of science, gave rise to the Renaissance in Europe. Thus, we can comfortably say that the Islamic world was the protector and promoter of science in the Middle Ages. During the Ottoman period following, 
scientific work continued in the centers and medrases of Istanbul, Anatolia, and Eastern Europe. Following the Industrial Revolution of the 19th century in Europe, the Islamic world moved from producing and exporting science and technology to importing it. Whereas it was our civilization which had produced Avicenna, Averroes, or Ibn Rushd in philosophy, Ibn Khaldun in sociology, and Piri Reis in geography. In my opinion, for the Islamic world, which created such a grand civilization from Samarkand to Cordoba, which made Cairo, Istanbul, Damascus, and Baghdad centers of science and culture, a revival that suits its history is possible. Distinguished guests, as you know, recent times have witnessed the most rapid development of science and technology in history. In this new era, which we call globalization, interdependencies of countries have increased in science as in all other fields. Thus, in today's world, the expression, knowledge is the believer's forgotten wealth, is much more important and much more meaningful. An academic understanding which is limited by geographic or cultural boundaries cannot be a good basis for scientific progress. Experience has shown us this. Since science is universal, it does not change according to geography, culture, race, or religion. If this is true, our universities and our academic intellects must be open to the world. Again today, the leading countries and groups of countries in the production of science and technology are located in several regions. Thus, in this multi-regional environment with multi-centers, the sharing of experience, exchange of technology, and cooperation in scientific training are ever more important. In particular, the Islamic countries, which have developed their economic and cultural cooperation in almost every area, also need to collaborate in this way. Thus, I am confident that the 15th Science Conference of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences will yield extremely beneficial results in this respect. I believe that there is much we can do to help each other in science education, the theme of this conference. <clears throat> For this reason, we, as Turkey, give great importance to collaboration among the members of the Organization of the Islamic Conference in Science and Technology, as has been the case in economics, culture, and social subjects. We have been involved in these activities since the beginning. I would like to state that we are ready to share our experiences in the production of science and technology with the higher education institutions of the Islamic countries. In my opinion, approaching the theme from different angles in each session of this conference of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences will prove extremely fruitful. It will ensure that the various situations and peculiarities in each member country are understood. As you know, in this conference beginning today, emphasis will be given to higher education. In fact, as is the case in Turkey, the targets of the development plans in general among all the Islamic countries, there is a mutually beneficial relationship between science and technology and higher education. Distinguished guests, in this political framework for the last 10 years, certain targets have been adopted, such as increasing public funds allotted to research and development. The development of research in engineering and medicine, and especially in pure science and applied science increasing the number and quality of scientists and researchers. In addition, when it was realized that scientific research was not being reflected 
in the economics of the country, technological research and development took its place in the development plans. As is so in the industrial, industrialized countries, in the developing countries also, a science and technology policy has been recognized as a major component of development. Now policies of this sort are organized so as to encompass the educational institutions and industry, as well as the government bodies which are to be responsible for the coordination of their research and development. Distinguished guests, how unfortunate it is that at present the Islamic countries are not at the same level as the industrialized countries, which are producing science and technology. Although without a doubt, every one of the Islamic countries is undertaking its own national development in this field. I believe that the Islamic World Academy of Sciences will provide a useful ground for the Islamic countries to exchange experiences, problems encountered, and paths to their solution. Within this framework, particularly in higher education, there are measures that can be taken which will serve the, those goals. To increase the capacity to understand, assimilate, apply, and generate science and technology, and to train manpower with these skills. To support research and development activities being carried out in large part in institutions of higher education. To examine and spread the application of advanced technology. To establish international knowledge networks and international technical cooperation. To encourage the establishment of technology centers and museums to support university industry cooperation. Of course, the distinguished experts attending this meeting will be discussing ways to reach these aims. Distinguished guests, as the government, we are striving to achieve a balance between policies for science and technology and policies for industry and education. In order to overcome the deficiencies that we meet, we are trying to establish a national academic network to include industry, the private and public sectors, as well as research and development institutions and universities. Additionally, we are taking serious steps on the road to becoming a scientific society. We are aiming to increase interest in science and to expand the scientific mentality. From this point of view, we take pleasure in noting advances, such as in the distribution of university students among the various fields, the distribution of the subjects in which publications are being made, and the citations to our scientific publications. To me, these are developments that show an increasing interest of our society in science and technology. Yet there is still a lot to be done in these fields. For that reason, we Islamic countries must speed up our efforts and join together. As you are aware, at this meeting, the contribution of higher education to scientific development <coughs> will be considered within the framework of those fields to which the development of science is directly related such as all the branches of engineering, the hard sciences, mathematics, and medicine. At the same time, various branches of the administrative and social sciences can also arouse interest in and a feeling for science. Thus, we need to take advantage of that. We know, for example, that scientific development with the leadership of institutions is something to be realized with the participation of society. For this reason, in our countries and societies, we must continue to support all institutions that are working to regain our rightful high status vis-a-vis -vis science. 
I would like to thank the members of the Islamic World Academy of Sciences, the distinguished participants, and the host, Bikant University, for serving this worthy purpose. I am confident that the conference will contribute to science and the Islamic world, and I salute you once again with affection and respect. Thank you.